19 years ago, Matthew Barnett pulled off the interstate into a Dairy Queen. He decided to quit to give up on his vision to plant a church in the heart of L.A. Matthew made several more similar stops in the days ahead, but he always turned back. Take a look. As you progress in your calling, I'm talking to people. Matthew Barnett is pastor of the historic Angelus Temple in Los Angeles, one of the fastest growing churches in America. Like his father, mega church pastor Tommy Barnett, Matthew had long dreamed of pastoring a large church. But when he landed in a dwindling impoverished church on LA Skid Row, he was ready to quit. He says it was then God gave him a vision to start a church that never sleeps. Out of that vision came the Dream Center, a humanitarian outreach for the homeless and downtrodden. Today, there are 180 Dream Centers around the country that serve more than 50,000 people a week. But it's not just a handout. Those who come are asked one question they don't expect. What is your dream? And please welcome back to the 700 Club, Pastor Matthew Barnett. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to be with you. you. Thank you. I love the Dairy Queen story. You know, so many <laughs> of us have wanted to throw in the towel. You almost quit the vision that God had put in your heart to start a church in the heart of L.A. You said you probably went to this Dairy Queen like five times, said, I'm out of here. I'm on my way back to Phoenix. But what happened? You never, you never went back. Yeah, you know, my dad always says uh, wanting to quit is a sign of success because it means you have something to quit. So uh, when you uh, rejoice sometimes when you want to, want to quit because it means there's something that is valuable that's being attacked of your life. And, and mine was the calling. I was 20 years of age, came to L.A. As you said, I was trying to pastor a traditional church in a city that was broken down. And uh, several times I went down that 10 freeway to go back home to the safe confines of a mega church in yeah. Phoenix, Arizona, where I was raised. And I said, God, I'm going to quit. But before I quit, I'm going to go to Dairy Queen and have uh, one of these blizzards. That's right. <laughs> before I quit. And then I would eat it and I'd pray. I'd say, okay, God, I'll give you one more day. And then I kept giving God one more day. And now I've given him 19 years. And it's amazing what can happen when the Bible says his mercies are new every single morning. It really is true. Sometimes all you have left is one more day to give God. But that might be the day that, that gets you over the yeah. hump into another phase of your life, into another phase. And then one day you'll wake up and 19 years later, you kept giving God one more day. And uh, that's been the journey we've had in Los Angeles. I have to ask this. What, what's your favorite blizzard flavor? Oh, the Heath Bar Blizzard. It's the, oh, it's the best. Okay. Absolutely. But, but I, I sample all of them. I'm, me I'm, too. I'm, I like Oreo. I'm okay. open mind. All right. We got that important Thank question you. out of the way. Well, today your Dream Center serves 50,000 people. You used to serve like 20. Okay. Now, what is the question that you ask people, the surprising question that you ask everybody that comes to the Dream Center? Well, a lot of people come to the Dream Center and uh, we ask them when they're homeless, they're in the cars, they have nothing. Uh, a family will show up and the, the, everything's gone. And the first question we ask people who have lost everything is very simple. What is your dream? And can I be honest with you? That question shocks people. Yeah. How can you ask me what my dream is when I'm trying to survive? How can you ask me what my dream is when I'm trying to overcome a 20 year addiction or living out of my car? But that's a question we, we need to ask because we're not trying to minister to people's need. We're trying to minister to their potential. Yeah. And that's the big difference. Sometimes only government programs can only minister to people's need. But we as a body of Christ can grab them by the hand and we can talk about getting people through college. We can talk about taking a homeless family, getting their GED, and then starting the process of full restoration for the glory of God. And uh, that's, why, that's why the book God's Dream for You, that's what we ask in the book. We, we tell people, you know, to start thinking about something more for their life. And uh, if we only minister to people's need, we'll only be taking care of their need for the rest of their life. Sure. But if we get to their potential, we can get into their God-given destiny, which is absolutely amazing when it begins to unfold. Tell us, Matthew, about some of these incredible dreams that have come true for some of these people that have been homeless or addicts. They've come to the Dream Center and, well, tell us. We've had people live under bridges for decades. The kind of people that you drive off the freeway and see them and say, how in the world can that person ever change? Right. And now these people are going uh, through college. We had one man who was homeless for 15 years, living in the bushes of LA, literally living there. Went to the Dream Center, got a meal, went to college, and now homeless Barry, who was living under the bridge, all the way up till 60 years of age, is now one of the pastors on our staff. And God has allowed us to see things that usually when you drive by, that person's too far gone, or that person cannot change. But we have seen such a dramatic transformation to where we no longer ask that question. That hospital is a beacon of hope where we believe everybody can change. We really believe there's not one person that's too far gone 
for our God to restore and to transform. Well, you've written this amazing book, God's Dream for You, Finding Lasting Change in Jesus. Why is it so important for each person to really understand the dream that God has for them? Because some people think their dream has died. They think it's over. They've gone through crushing circumstances or bitter defeat. And, yeah. and the book is really about a broken dream and how when you give God that broken dream, he might restore a dream different than any way you, you, you could possibly imagine. I never dreamed that we'd be ministering to homeless people. I've never realized I had a ministry to people that had drug addiction. I've never used drugs in my life. But the fact of the matter is, within the book, we talk about people discovering their dream in the middle of brokenness. And when you think that maybe your life is over, you have nothing left to give God but broken pieces, that's usually what he's looking for to begin to build the dream that he has for you. Mm -hmm. And my dream died, and I thank God that it did, right. because God put back together something so incredible that was far beyond my comprehension. So the book is really encouraging people out there who kind of feel like they're in a place of their life where they feel everything is dead. Just look around at whatever you have left to submit to God, and you might find the building blocks of one of the greatest dreams ever, the dream you were born to live for, God's dream. I tweeted yesterday when a quote from your book, a broken dream, is really the way to a better dream, God's dream. Yeah. I think I'm getting it right. It's some that's right. close. Yeah, and God doesn't destroy dreams in rock bottom. He recreates them. And uh, that's the beauty of our lives. You know, it's, it's, if, if everything would have happened on my five-year timetable, I was a pastor, I was 20, I put everything on the wall. This has got to happen the first year. This has got to happen year two. Yeah. I was addicted to the timetable. And one day God said, throw that away. Hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge that's him. so hard, isn't it? And he shall direct my path. Yeah, well, and you just... all of a sudden, that changed my life. I realized all I have to do is acknowledge him, and he's going to take care of the path. And little did I realize that this path would be the most incredible path that we could ever imagine. Trafficking victims, homeless people, all these type of people that we're ministering to on a daily basis were never in the original plan, but they were in God's dream. Well, you just celebrated 19 years at the Dream Center. That is Congratulations. 19 years, and we spent the whole um, 19th year birthday living on the streets homeless and, um, and, and serving people and working and doing a 24-hour outreach into the community. So for 24 hours, we had no place to lay our head. We just went all over the city loving people, serving people, and making a difference. So I felt on a 19th year anniversary, rather than having a party and cake, let's go out there and do something that defines who we are on a daily basis. And so we did a 24-hour outreach throughout the entire city of Los Angeles. And uh, we just had a blast. So inspiring. Matthew, it's so great to meet you. Matthew's book is called God's Dream for You, and it's available where books are sold. And we also have a web-exclusive interview with Matthew. To watch that, just log on to CBN.com and click the In the Green Room link.